Good morning, everyone. We welcome you here to New Hope. We can tell that the earth is getting farther away from the sun as it's getting cooler. We learned that in Sunday school this morning. So you never know what you're going to learn when you come to Sunday school. So we welcome you whether you're here or whether you're online. So today is the last day for pledges for the Pregnancy Center. So Carol Jividen will be at the information table. If any of you still have pledges to give for the walk for the Pregnancy Center. So if any of you want to join us in the walk, the walk takes place in Bowling Green at the City Park at 10 o'clock in the morning. We take a quick walk around the park. It's usually a beautiful day. They offer a free lunch, and if you have kids, it's a nice uh, time to bring your kids because they have a bouncy house and stuff for the kids. So it's always a good time and just to support and fellowship with those who, who believe in life. I have a, a friend who um, has adopted children from China, and she said the other day that adoptions were closing from China, that they weren't going to allow overseas adoptions, whether that's for a time, a period, or what. But um, so much more the important that we have babies here that people can adopt. <coughs> you receive flyers for the fall party today. This is for you to remind you of when it is or to share it with someone who you would like to invite. You can be thinking about a snack item that you can bring because we do uh, make hot dogs, but we provide snack items for those that come. You can invite grandkids, neighbors, and friends, whoever you can find, just, just invite them. <coughs> Last week I shared about the outreach at Ohio State and how um, they had several students that gave their life to the Lord. And if I would have thought about it on my feet better, I would have had Anna Allison come up and share that because she was a participant there. And so I asked her just to share with me what her account was. And so this is what she said. It was an amazing experience and an event to witness. The night was filled with lots of worship and the football players shared their testimonies. After the sharing, they gave opportunity for anyone to come forward and accept the Lord. At first, no one really got up, but they kept saying, all it takes is the faith of one person, and once someone started going up, more followed. They had a prayer team, and each person that went forward was prayed over. They said, if you want to take the next step, you can get baptized. People started gathering around watching friends get baptized. One of my friends made the choice to get baptized. Everyone would start cheering for each person that got baptized, and they continued to worship until 10 o'clock, because then the university has rules in place for ending public meetings. Each person was given a Bible who got baptized and anyone else who wanted a Bible. It was amazing to see students who were walking by to stop and watch what was going on. It was amazing to see so many students making the choice to follow Jesus. And you know, for, for Anna, that was just a wonderful experience because she saw somebody she knew make a choice to follow Jesus. And that starts to make it real personal and makes you feel a part of what's going on. And somewhere, sometime in our life, we all need to have that experience of us receiving Jesus or seeing our family receiving Jesus. And it just increases your faith as you see people make life changes to follow the Lord. How exciting it is to see that generation uh, coming to the Lord because they need to take their place. We're all responsible to reach our generation, and that generation needs to reach that generation. So with those announcements, the children may line up at the back door, and a teacher will take you over to Kids Church. Thank you. Okay, before we do our offering this morning, um, I've got someone visiting with us today. Um, back in, golly, it was, well, when we had church in Fostoria on Saturday nights, which that's been, I don't know, 15 years ago, there was a lady that came all the time. It was uh, Lee Coppler, and uh, she's just a neat lady. Well, Lee's daughter's with us today, Charlotte, and Charlotte was telling me a testimony back there, um, and I thought, Wow. Everybody ought to hear this, so come on up, Charlotte. And she's going she's gonna to share testimony with us. It's always, always good to, I don't know, it's always good to see people, from, not from the past, but kind of from the past. 
Use that. Hi. Um, I didn't know I was going to do this today. <laughs> um, so bear with me. I uh, have a testimony. I'm here to, I wasn't called to preach or teach or anything like that, but I was called to share, like we Amen. all are, about our Savior. And I'm going to tell you what he did for me. And when I cry, it's not because of what I'm going through or what I went through. It's because of what he did for me. And uh, I was, a year ago, I could not walk or talk or anything. I had a brain tumor. It had been in my head for a long time. And what happened was my uh, tumor started at the top of my brain stem. And if anybody knows anything about a brain stem, it's, it's what controls your whole body. Like whether you blink or burp or breathe or your heartbeat, that is controlled by your brainstem. Well, mine crushed from the top to the bottom, and I'm alive today, thanks to the mercy of God. And I, I can't say it enough. I can't tell people enough how wonderful Jesus is. I, I had been losing body senses over a period of years. I didn't know what it was. I thought, boy, I'm really getting old fast. What's happening? I said, uh, you know, I attributed everything to old age. Uh, I went to Google, and they didn't tell me nothing. But I started uh, getting scared because it was getting worse. And I got up one night, and I was crying out to God. And I said, God, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Help me. And I had a Bible in my lap. It was my husband's Bible. And I, I said, Lord, I know that you speak to us through your word, and I really need you to tell me something because I'm scared. And I looked down, and my Bible was in Hebrews. It just kind of fell open that way. And I didn't know why it would be Hebrews. When I looked for a comfort scripture, I never went to Hebrews. So I, I looked at it, and I looked down in that part, like the song they sang earlier, he will never leave us or forsake us. I read that, and right then I was going to be okay. I knew it. I just, and so I, everything kept getting worse, but I knew he was with me. And then I woke up one day, and I could not get up. I couldn't walk anymore. And so I went, or my husband helped me up. We went to the doctor. They found the tumor that explained why everything was going wrong. It wasn't just getting older. It was, uh, you know, the tumor was taking my senses away. And I came home. I wasn't scared, but I still, I didn't know what was going on. You know, the last thing the doctor said after he told me what was going to happen, or you could die. <laughs> and so then I was like, I went up to my daughter's old bedroom, and, and I began to pray. And let me tell you, there is nothing like a brain tumor that makes you seek the <laughs> Lord. Uh, so I started praying uh, as hard as I could. And, and I just, it was amazing how the Lord came down, that he cared enough, that he loved me enough, that he came down and gave me his peace that he died for so that I could have. And I had that peace that passes all understanding. It's, it's amazing when, when you, I, you know, I had that joy, unspeakable joy given to me. You know, the Bible tells us rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I, and, you know, and I remember my mom as a little girl. She hit her hand with a, a, her thumb with a hammer, and she started praising the Lord. And I never understood that, but I had a brain tumor, and, buddy, I was happy. How does that happen unless the Lord does it? And so... Uh, I went to surgery. It was a two-day deal. It was last October, the 14th and 15th, and uh, 
It was uh, a long, I went in for 14 hours on the first day, and they just uh, took the side of my head off, <laughs> you know, to kind of be blunt, that's what they did. The second day was to go in and get the tumor. Well, your brain stem isn't like just a, it's like this. So that tumor had been growing in my head and for a long time and they, it like stuck in. So they had to cut and pull and burn and they, I went back there at five thir or five in the morning and I did not get done till one in the morning. So that was a long surgery with my head being exposed. That right there, people don't make it through that. And um, so God was with me. And the doctor said, you wore me out. <laughs> and I said, it's a good thing we prayed for you before you went in because, you know, I prayed for his strength and that he knew what to do. And, um, and so I, I told Pastor Ron that this wouldn't be long, but when I start talking about Jesus and what he did for me, it's hard for me to stop. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to share you that he's still performing miracles. I am alive and well, and his spirit lives within me. And, um, you know, he, he, he still is the same God as he was yesterday, today, and forever. So it doesn't matter what you're going through or what you feel, what you see. It's what he does. Mm -hmm. And he loves us. And he will take care of us if it, we have to be in his will and he will do whatever um and i just can't thank him enough and he was uh there for me the whole time and when i got up and i woke up i didn't know who i was i didn't know where i was i just knew if i said my birthday and i was at westner at, down at ohio state they would leave me alone um <laughs> So I, I would learn to say that, but I didn't know, why can't I walk? I, I, something was wrong. It didn't make sense to me. But God has just been, you know, teaching me things and, and showing me things and sharing me things. And, and God's timing is perfect. And, um, you know, and when the time was right, uh, it I was able to do everything, and, and it's coming back. And there's still a little bit of paralysis and things, but it's nothing that's going to stop me. And I just want to encourage everyone that God is real. Jesus died for our healing, and it was taken care of at the cross, and it's there. So if you need a healing, just, you know, seek the Lord, and he's, you know, he, he heals. <laughs> And I just, I'm not a speaker, so I'm sorry you had to go through all this, but uh, I just want to thank Jesus, you know, publicly and, and tell you he's, he's still a miracle-working God. And um, thanks for listening to me, and I want to thank Paula for bringing me. <laughs> um, I don't, thank you, bye-bye. Oh, you did good. You're good. That's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. Can I share something about my mom? About your mom? Sure. Only because it's about your mom. Uh, well, when I was in the state, um, and you know when you're a little kid and you fall down and you get a boo-boo, you want your mommy? Well, when I was in the state, I wanted my mom, but she passed away 15 years ago. Pastor Ron did the funeral. Um, and of course she couldn't come but my mom was what's known as a prayer warrior oh she prayed when I was a little girl and we lived in Virginia we went to so many prayer meetings and and she was praying and everybody was like her they called her Leecha down there up here she you know up north she dropped her Italian name to Lee but uh, she uh, they would say, you got to pray, you got to pray. And my mom prayed on all these prayer cloths and, and would give them to people. And she 
my brother had some and so he was up from Virginia and he sent back for them to be sent up so my mom's prayers were there with me in the hospital that she had prayed years ago to the God that heals yeah. and he heard and so I just want to encourage everyone don't no matter what you see no matter what you feel no matter what the doctor says it's what god does it's what he does and that's it i'm done thank you thank you very good thank you keep it keep it goes down god bless you all right well amen amen it's just so good to hear what god does it's just so good Okay, let's have the ushers come forward now, and we'll take up our offering. Um, I got several prayer requests. Um, Sarah Rieger, Sarah Cox Rieger, um, is going to have a C-section tomorrow, so we want to keep her in prayer. Um, Dan, uh, Rachel's husband Dan, has been having some stomach issues, so we need to keep Dan in prayer. There's a lady whose name is the same as somebody in this room, but her name is Linda Schultz. It's not the Linda Schultz in this room. <laughs> but anyway, it's, she's the mother of uh, Keeley and the kids. So anyway, it's her, their grandmother. Anyway, she uh, just had heart surgery, and she's just going through issues. We need to pray for her. Ken Brooks uh, was taken to ER this morning. He's, he's got a bleeding issue in his lip, and he couldn't get it stopped. Um, continue to pray for Becky Hunker. Um, Becky is home now from her hip surgery. Um, she's still having a lot of, lot of pain, so we just need to continue to pray for her. And Karen Keller um, went through uh, surgery this week. She had a uh, uh, defibrillator and a pacemaker put in, and uh, she's home recovering from that. So. Um, we just need to keep all those requests in, in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray you, you would just uh, continue to remind us, Lord, of your faithfulness and, and, Lord, of who you are and what you want to do. Lord, so many times we just get to looking at things around us and we forget who you are. So, Lord, we just uh, pray you'd help us to continue to trust you and to look to you for the help that we need. We pray for Sarah, Lord, we pray you'd be with her tomorrow as she has a C-section. Lord, just watch over her and, and just uh, bring her through this and uh, help that baby to be delivered. Lord, we pray for uh, Linda Schultz. We pray that you would just touch her and, Lord, continue your healing in her body. Lord, just help her to look to you and to trust you through this time. Lord, we pray for Dan. We just ask you to touch Dan's stomach and, and just heal him and just restore him to health. Ken Brooks, we pray you just uh, help this bleeding to stop. Lord, just, uh, just help the doctors to, to be with him through this time and to do whatever they need to do. Lord, we pray for Becky. We pray that you continue to touch her body. And Lord, just uh, take this pain away. Lord, just help her to be able to feel better and not have this pain that she has to deal with. Lord, just touch her and bring healing to her body. And Lord, we thank you for being with Karen this week as she has surgery. Lord, just thank you for taking care of her. Just continue to strengthen her. Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for us. And Lord, just help us remember you're a good God. Lord, you're loving and caring. And, and Lord, you do want to heal us. And so, Lord, just help us to look to you and to trust you. Lord, we just thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all that you do and all that you're doing and for providing for us and taking care of us. Lord, just receive our offering now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This week I'm going to continue to talk about our words. You know, I didn't, didn't really know if I was going to do two weeks, but um, at the beginning of the week the Lord spoke to me and says, hey, I was listening to a couple of people at church, and uh, you better do that one one more time. <laughs> no, he didn't really say that. I, <laughs> he didn't really, that was a joke. I told somebody, I was debating whether I was going to say that because people, when I say things, they go, oh, did he really think that? No, that was a joke. Okay, that was a joke. Um, but I do want to continue to think about our words and how important our words are. You know, um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one: death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. 
Death and life are in the power of our tongue. It's our words are important. Our words bring health and happiness when spoken rightly. In Proverbs 16, 24, it says, Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. I don't know, we don't eat honey from the honeycomb, but um, I was told that, you know, and, and well, some people do. I know, um, Jeff, he sells, he sells honey in the honeycomb once in a while. People do like it that way. Um, but, you know, in the old days, that's how they ate honey. You know, they, they ate honey in the honeycomb, and, and you know, the... The picture is you, you break off a piece of it and you chew the honey out of the honeycomb. And, uh, and that honey is sweet. It's sweet. It's pleasant to the taste. Um, honey is proven to be an immune, boost, an immune booster and contains antioxidants. It's nutritious and energy giving. I have the other day, somebody, I don't know, somewhere, I saw something that says... Um, Spoonful of honey will keep you going for 24 hours. It's enough nutrition. I saw something like that now. I think over a long period of time, that's probably not going to keep you going. But, um, you know, a little bit of honey can do a lot for, for your body. And so we see that our pleasant words are like honeycomb. They bring sweetness and health to our bones. They bring health to our being, to, to us. They bring health, you know. Um, in Proverbs 15:4, it says, "A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness is, in it breaks the spirit. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. It brings life to us. Our words, what we say to people. You know, I, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, when Charlotte shares her testimony, her words, her words are spoken. She was speaking what happened to her and speaking what God does. It brings life to you. Yes. Yes. It brings life. It's like, yes, yes. yes. Wow, that's good. That's good. And so that's what our words should be. Our words should be words that are pleasant. They should be wholesome. They speak life and health to people. You know, it makes people feel better. Amen. It encourages them. You know, a tongue that is impure, evil, corrupt, it breaks the spirit. You know, when you get somebody that speaks words that aren't encouraging, it breaks you on the inside. And especially if you hear it over and over and over. You know, I had a, I had a situation this week. Um, I was at a, in a place talking to a couple gentlemen. And, uh, you know... I was kind of a bystander, just sitting in a chair. I was sitting here, and another one sitting there, and one guy was over there. And I was just sitting there, kind of listening to the conversation. And, and uh, this fellow, he started talking about, um, he was a farmer, and uh, he started talking about some things, and he was kind of complaining, and you know, kind of, you know, like farmers do. But, um, <laughs> but you know, no, he was just, he was just kind of going on about farming, and, and, and I said, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough times. And, and I just made the comment, you know, you know, sometimes I, well, anyway, I just made the comment. I said, well, yeah, but it depends what the government says. And my thing is, you know, one, out, one part of the government says, you know, we got a food shortage and a crisis, and we're all going to starve to death because of climate change. And another part of the government says we have a surplus, and so now your prices are low. I think, wait a minute. Wait, how can this be? And so I just threw out part of a statement about, well, yeah, you know, the government says, and man, I no more and said that, and this guy come unglued. And I'm just sitting there going, whoa. And he give me a lecture, and he, you know, he starts telling me the what for, that he went to college and graduated with honors, and he had a master's degree, and he was a farmer, and what do you, and I'm sitting there thinking, wow. And his words were not very pleasant. His gestures to me were worse. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, my goodness. And I couldn't even hardly get a word in advice. And, you know, at that point, I kind of, I might have said something just to irritate him. I don't know. But it's like, hey, okay, fella. you know. Anyway, so he just went on and ran and raved. And, you know, after about 10, 15 minutes, he got up and said, well, I got to go. And they said goodbye. And he left. And I thought, wow. 
Those words, man, that was like stab you. Ugh. And so the other, I said to the fellow, I says, who was that guy? <laughs> so he told me his name. Now I realize I'm related to him. <laughs> now, it's pretty far. I, I, can't, I probably can't get it quite right, but my mother and his grandmother were probably cousins. So, you know, it's pretty far. He didn't know me from nobody. But I heard his name, and I thought, I know who you are. So I thought, and he went back and turned around, and he was coming back out the driveway. I thought, eh, I'll go out and talk to him. So I went out and talked to him. I said, hey, I think we're related. <laughs> and he looks at me like, yeah, right. And I said, well, and I started to tell him about his grandmother and how we used to go visit his grandmother and his grandfather and, uh, you know, how we were connected and this and that. And then he, he said, well, what's your name? So I told him my name. He says, who's your dad? I told him my dad's name. He says, did he sell Pioneer Seed Corn? I said, yeah. He says, yeah, my dad bought from him. And so he started now to piece it together. Yeah. And so the last parting gesture was a handshake. Yeah. Put his hand out the window. He says, well, good to meet you. So I thought, wow. Such terrible words. Terrible words. But... You know, thank goodness I didn't retaliate, didn't argue with him, didn't say anything back, and eventually I get a handshake. So, so, you know, words are important. Words are important. Words can bring life, can bring life. You know, words, and I mentioned it last week, but words are especially important for parents. Parents' words bless or curse and it also goes for people that take care of children. You know, um, it's important for the people who minister to children or the people who drive our children. You know, that when we speak to children, we speak words of life and encouragement to them. That doesn't mean you don't correct them. But when you correct them, you don't talk down to them. You correct them, but you don't talk down to them. And our desire is to be a blessing. Our desire is to bless children. Sometimes children are hard to bless. <laughs> Sometimes they're just irritating you. You know? But you still bless them. You still bless them. And we don't, you know, we don't just try to keep from saying something discouraging. Well, I don't want to say anything bad. No, we need to say something positive. We need to be a blessing. You know, in Mark, the 10th chapter, they brought little children. I, we hear this all the time. But they brought little children to Jesus that he might touch them. His disciples rebuked him, rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. He says, let the little children come to me and don't forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And then he took them up in his arms laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. He blessed them. Blessed them. Blessed them with his words. He spoke blessing to them. And as parents, that's what we need to do. We need to speak words of encouragement and blessing to our children. And also, grandparents, neighbors, teachers, whatever your position might be with children, we need to speak words of blessing to them. Words of encouragement. We need to be a blessing. You know, in the Bible, in Colossians 3.21, it says, Fathers, don't provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Provoke them. Don't, don't agitate them. Don't be after them all the time because they can become discouraged. You know, don't deliberately annoy them, belittle them, make fun of them. Be patient. Some children need more than others. Children are all different, you know. Some need more than others. This morning in the van, one of the kids was saying stuff, and the kids were getting irritated with them. You know, they, they were trying to straighten them out. I said, now just leave them alone. Now just, just, just leave them alone, let him go. And then I had to tell him, okay, that's enough. <laughs> you know, you've said enough. Now you need to be quiet. 
But, you know, we need to be patient. We need to be encouraging. We need to encourage him for the good. And here's some thoughts to share with your children. Proverbs 13, 20. It says, he who walks with a wise man will be wise, but the, com the companion of fools will be destroyed. You can encourage your children to be careful about who they walk with. You know, when you talk about blessing your children, encouraging them, you can give them words to encourage them to pick your friends carefully. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Be careful how you pick your friends. And I have, I have children who say to me, well, there's not very many out there to pick from that are good. Well, that is true. But still be careful. Be careful how you pick your friends. And, and you can bless your children, encourage them by explaining that to your children. Teach them. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Teach your children that trusting God can give them perfect peace. The world, the world can't give you peace. There, there, there's a song. There's, I remember. The world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. You know, peace is from God. The peace of God passes all our under, human understanding. We need to teach that to our children and bless them and say, you know, if you want perfect peace, keep your mind on the Lord. Trust him. Trust him. Look to him. He's the one. In Proverbs 91, when, uh, well, you know, when our kids were young, which has been a while, when our kids were young, uh, Mary had tapes by a lady, and she used to play these to our kids when they went to sleep. It was nothing but scripture. And she would play them to them and let them play while they went to sleep. And uh, so what I'm saying is, you know, it's important to share scripture with your children. One of the scriptures that we shared with our children a lot was Psalms 91. Psalms 91. This is why this will bless your children. It says, He who dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He's your, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Bless your children. Teach them not to be afraid. Teach them not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. You know, some children, some children are afraid of the dark. You know, well, you can share the word of God with them. Don't be afraid of the terror that comes at night. You know, don't be afraid. Fear not. Bless your children with God's word. Bless your children. Be a blessing. Be a blessing to them. And, you know, you can, these are just a few of the you know, scriptures that I saw and thought about. There's hundreds and thousands of scriptures you could share with your children. You know, but bless them. Bless them. Give them a blessing. And avoid evil words that curse. And that's really, you know, I say that because we need to be aware of when we speak evil or say things we shouldn't. When we need to avoid those words. I always say, if you work hard to be a blessing, you won't say the, the evil. You know, so part of my, my desire is that, you know, we figure out to be a blessing. We stress on being a blessing. But, you know, sometimes we've got to realize, well, there's certain things that aren't right. Certain things we shouldn't share. Ephesians 4.29. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necess for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. No corrupt, don't let any corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Anything that doesn't glorify God. Like it's pretty narrow. But we need to realize that, you know, we should not let corrupt words come out of our mouth. Foul or abusive language. You know, now, the fellow I was sitting with that was giving me all that, I don't think he's a Christian. So this, 
you know, this doesn't pertain to me. It's not my job to correct him. It's not my job to get him to talk right. This is talking to God's people. Don't let foul words or abusive language come out of your mouth. Things that are insulting or name-calling. You know, just don't do that. Don't do that. Don't let that, don't let that come out of your mouth. Be a blessing. Proverbs 16, 27 says, An ungodly man digs up evil, and it's on his lips like a burning fire. The ungodly, they sit around plan to do evil. They, they sit around and think about how they can do things to people, how they can get people, and it comes out on their lips. You know, they'll, they'll start to talk it. And so we have to be careful not to let ungodly things, evil, come out of our mouth. Proverbs 26, 18 and 19 says, Like a madman who throws fire bands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor or says, I was only joking. Did you ever hear that? Somebody says something really terrible, and then, well, I guess I did that this morning. Hey, that was a joke. Well, it was a joke. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we've got to be very careful about saying things and go, well, I was just joking. Did you, if you ever had anybody do that to you, then you kind of go, were they really? Were they really? Or did they say it and then start to realize what they had said and they go, well, I was just joking. I, you know. Well, be very careful that you know your words, once they're out, you can't stuff them back in. They are out. You can say, I was only joking. But maybe you were and maybe you weren't. But I believe for us, we have to be very careful about our words. You know, we have to be very careful about tricking people, lying to people, and then excuse it by, well, I was only joking. You know, sometimes we say, I was only joking when we get caught. You know, somebody catches you saying something. Did you say that to somebody? Oh, I was only joking. Well, we have to be very careful, very careful about our words. So what is, what is God's plan? I believe God has a definite plan for his people. His people. In Genesis 12, 2 and 3, he told Abraham, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. He says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you, and in you... All the families of the earth will be blessed. I believe that blessing is on God's people today. That is God's word to us. He says, I want to make you a blessing. I want to bless you. His desire is to bless us. Not so we can go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. God, he just gives me whatever I want. He takes good care of me. He says, I want to bless you so that you can bless other people. I want to bless you. The reason he blesses people is to be a blessing. He doesn't bless us just to say, well, I'm going to just keep that all for myself. He blesses us to be a blessing. And I believe God's people will bless the earth. That's what God's intent is. He wants us to bless the earth, to bless everyone else. He wants us to be a blessing because we're going to make a difference. If you're a person that is a blessing, you are different than a person who brings cursing. There's a difference. There's a difference. When you're around it, you can, you can feel it. You can see it. And we're meant to be a blessing. We're meant to bless. That's, that's what God calls us to do. Be a blessing. You know, bless, bless people, even those people that irritate you. Even those people that say stuff, you're like, what's wrong with them? Well, just be a blessing to them. Be a blessing to them. They need it. They need it. Not because they deserve it. Because sometimes we think, well, I'm not blessing them. And they don't, they don't deserve that. Yes, they do. They need it. They need it. They need to know God's blessing. They need to know that somebody can be a blessing. 
Then they may even ask you, how's come you're always so nice? How's come, how's come you didn't get mad? How's come you didn't, you know? And then you can share, well, God wants me to be a blessing. God wants me to bless you. You know, that's, that's God's purpose for us, to be a blessing. And he says, we're the one that's going to bless the earth. We're going to bless the earth. We can make a difference. We're the salt of the earth. We're the salt. So we can make a difference. In 1 Peter 3.9, it says, Don't return evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. We are called to this. We are called to be a blessing. Called, called, purpose. You know, people always say, well, what's my, I don't know what my purpose is. We're called to be a blessing. That's a purpose. It's a God-given purpose. Wherever you're at, you can be a blessing. You will, best, you will bless people that I will never have contact with. You know, and each of us will bless people that nobody else will have contact with. We can be a blessing. You know, we're called to this. And it says so that you can inherit a blessing. There's an implication here that if you bless people, you, God blesses you. You know, and I believe he takes care of us. He provides for us. He blesses us. It's God's intent to bless us. God doesn't want to destroy us. God doesn't want to see us fail. God doesn't want to see us going through, you know, he wants to bless us. And some may say, well, yeah, but man, I'm going through some stuff. That's what's, you know, like Charlotte, you know, I, there was a time when you were going through that that probably didn't feel like a blessing. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this doesn't feel like a blessing. You know, he's with us in the fire and in the flood. Sometimes it may not feel like a blessing, but he still wants to bless us. It's still his purpose. It's still what he wants. And so we need to then be a blessing to those around us. That we purposely, Lord, help me today to see somebody that I could bless. Help me today to see somebody that I could encourage. Help me to see them because, you know, sometimes we're so busy we can't even see them. And then, you know, Lord, if you put somebody in front of me that's just downright irritable, help me to see that, you know, I could bless them too. You know, that that's okay. I don't have to, I don't have to get mad at them. I don't have to retaliate. I don't have to defend myself. I can just, you know, be a blessing. Be a blessing. So today I want to I wanna close with um, a blessing. And uh, I hadn't really thought about how to do it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have everybody stand. And um, in Numbers, the 22nd chapter, God spoke to Moses. Everybody, you can stand now. And, and uh, God spoke to Moses and he said, speak to Aaron and his sons and say this. This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. This is how you're going. I want you to bless them. And these are the words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. It's God's blessing. It's his word to you. To you. May the Lord bless you this week. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>